so in this problem we are looking at the measure measurability of monotone functions so this is about measurability of monotone functions uh, of course we can use the classical result of uh, a real analysis that says that monotone um, monotone uh, functions they have a countable set of uh, defined on an interval of course on a bounded interval and then of course you can extend that to the whole real countable uh, uh, set of discontinuous points so it's almost continuous except on a countable set if you use that then uh, you can show that in fact they are measured but here what they want us to do is to use the definition of uh, of uh, uh, measurability of a function to prove it directly that's what they want this is the purpose of this exercise okay it's a very simple one so first of all so we assume that uh, so uh, first of all note that uh, uh, let's, let's recall f is monotone increasing this is always a, a problem between uh, monotone increasing or non-decreasing Uh, some some authors they use non-decreasing. I use monotone increasing, which means that if x on the domain, uh, of course, of course, if x is less than y, then we have f of x less than f of y. X and y are in the domain of f. Okay, and strict strict if uh, strict increasing. if x less than y implies f of x less than f of y. So in, in, in fact, uh, if you like, if you want to say a combination of one to one with uh, injective and uh, monotone increasing, okay? So um, let us uh, prove the first one. Uh, uh, also, I forgot to mention that uh, if uh, not if we have if and only if we have f is increasing if and only if minus f is decreasing so remember that the definition if decreasing for decreasing we just reverse this inequality huh? okay so if you reverse it you get the concept of decreasing. So f is increasing if and only if minus f is uh, uh, decreasing. Okay, and therefore, uh, if you want to show that f is measurable, if and only if this is also true, minus f is measurable. So all this tells us what it tells us that we can prove the result for increasing, and we will obtain it for. Uh, decreasing. So uh, we just focus on one and then we get the other. This is typical uh, in many many properties and theorems related to different stuff in mathematics including like measurability in this case but you have other stuff. Uh, okay so what do we want to show? We want to show that we assume that f defined on an interval is strictly increasing okay and i is an interval okay and we want to show that f is measurable okay so for that fix c in r and we want to show that set of x such that f of x greater than c is measurable okay so the idea here is to study this set okay uh, this set here for a, a strictly increasing function what is it okay 
So what we have is uh, so what are all the possible cases? Okay. So first of all, uh, this is x in i. Okay. So uh, let us take um, so what we are going to do is uh, denote this set by c. Okay. So first, uh, if okay, if c is equal to i or c is equal to empty set, we are done. Okay, we are done. Okay, meaning that it is measurable. So now, assume c not empty and c not equal to i okay so what does it mean it means there exists a in i such that f uh, uh, a does not belongs to c which means that f of a is not greater than c so it's going to be less or equal than c okay Obviously, <coughs> for assume now, assume there exists x in C such that x less or equal to A. Since f is strictly increasing, okay, since f is increasing, then f of x is going to be less or equal than f of a. I'm not assuming that x is not equal to a, to, to a anyway, so I just I'm assuming, uh, do I know because a is not in c so we are, we are going to have here So, but it's not important anyway so, okay, so this will tell us what? that f of x is less than c and therefore this is not possible by definition of the set C, okay, capital C. So we have basically for every x in C, A is less than x. So C is bounded below. C is bounded below. So x0 equals the infimum of C exists. Okay, so we have two cases. Case one. Okay. Oh, before I do the two cases, so note by definition of the infimum that C is included in uh, x0 plus infinity intersect i, or C is included in x0 plus infinity intersect the reason I'm saying this is because it depends if x0 is in C or not okay so this inclusion uh, only depends uh, if x0 is in C or if x0 is not in C okay so now case 1 x0 belongs to C okay so in this case claim in fact, C is equal to x0 plus infinity intersect i. Okay? Why? Well, we know, as I said, by definition of x0 being the infimum, we know that C is a subset of x0 plus infinity intersect i. Okay? Let x belongs to x0 plus infinity intersect i okay so what do we have then x0 is less or equal than x okay so f being uh, increasing f of x0 
is going to be less or equal than f of x and because x0 belongs to c this will imply that c is less than f of x and since x belongs to i x belongs to c which gives you exactly the equality that we want okay it's true x0 does not belongs to c so we claim in this case that c in fact is the open interval plus infinity intersect i so we know again as we did before that c is in intersect i by definition of the infimum so let x belongs to x0 plus infinity intersect i okay so this implies that x0 is less than x and since x0 is infimum by definition of the infimum okay so there exists a in c such that x0 less or equal than a less than x so this is by uh, the definition of the infimum of set okay since f is increasing we get that f of a is less than strictly of course of x though I don't need it I can just live with less or equal so f of a belongs to c this is greater than c so uh, c is less than f of x so x belongs to c because it belongs to i as well okay that's why so it's an element of i such that so what do we have now okay so we have oh, what are all the possible so possible cases all the possible cases c equal empty set c equals i c equals certain x0 plus infinity intersect i okay or c equal open interval intersect i so you see i is an interval is measurable x0 plus infinity open or close is measurable empty set is measurable so you see all possible cases gives you a measurable set therefore uh, c is measurable for any little c so the conclusion f is measurable okay so for the second one we do not assume that f is strictly increasing we just assume that f is mo monotone increasing or increasing large not strict so what we are going to do we introduce functions which are strictly increasing okay where n is greater than 1 and obviously uh, f, f is increasing uh, and 1 over n times x is strictly increasing the sum will be strictly increasing okay so these fn's are strictly increasing defined on i because f is only defined on i okay so from the previous result we know that fn is measurable for any n greater than 1 but what's interesting is that this sequence of fn's converges pointwise to f when n goes to infinity so f being the limit the pointwise limit of fn for any x in fact is converges pointwise everywhere not almost everywhere it's enough to be almost everywhere to have this conclusion but here is everywhere so f is measurable 